will it ever stop? As I'm filming this, it is SantaCon, which if you don't know what that is, consider yourself lucky. I live above a bar. There are a lot of drunk Santas outside my apartment right now. Hey, what is up? My name is Catherine, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be updating you guys on the project pan that I started at the beginning of fall this year, and also showing you guys all of my empty products from since that project pan started. So basically when I started that, I got out one of my reusable grocery bags. I chose my cute sloth bag because I love sloths and I've been saving all of my empty hair, skincare, and makeup products since that started so I can just kind of keep track of my product usage and then I'll talk a little bit about each product if I'd repurchase it or not and why. Real quick, I don't know if you guys noticed in my last video, I got new lights. I personally think they look a lot nicer. But I have this like blank space over here. Cute Taylor Swift music. If anyone has any suggestions for what to put here, I'm like eyeing some like little LED signs on Amazon, but I'm not really sure yet. I suck at decorating, so please leave your ideas down below. Every video this week is going to be declutter oriented, so I'm starting out just updating you guys on my empties and my product usage, and then from there we are going to start decluttering. I'm separating it into like decluttering by categories, so, like Foundation, concealer, primer is one video, brushes is one video, eyeshadow palettes is another video just because I didn't want it to be like a 50 minute declutter video and some people are worse at hoarding makeup in one category than other categories so I figured some people might be more interested in certain declutter videos. Make sure you subscribe and have my notifications on. I typically post on Wednesdays and Sundays but throughout December I'm just trying to post as much as I can despite finals and holiday coverage at work. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I think I'm gonna start with the empties because I have like some Project Pam products in here that'll get those out of the way. I'm just grabbing things from the top. So first thing I have in here is this Herbal Essences Replenish White Charcoal Conditioner. I was using this as a co-wash. So if you're not like familiar with the concept, it's the conditioner that you use to like wash your scalp. I only wash my hair once a week because I have curly hair so it's really dry so every time I shower when it's not hair wash day I use a co-wash and this was the co-wash I was using. I think this smells amazing and my scalp definitely felt clean when I use it but I'm trying to make the transition into cruelty free hair care now. I've transitioned my makeup and my skincare into being cruelty free and now I'm attacking hair care and Herbal Essences is not a cruelty-free brand, and I believe I have found a co-wash that is cruelty-free. This smells like almost cologne which I really liked because I like cologne smells. So if you're not conscious about being cruelty-free and you like more like musky smells, this could be a good one for you. And I, I liked everything about it except the fact that it's not cruelty-free, so that's that. Next I have this Diva Curl Heaven and Hair Intense Moisture Treatment, so this is just a more deep conditioner like a once a week hair mask i only had this because my mom bought it for herself like forever ago and didn't like it so she gave it to me i didn't like the smell of it nor did i find that it actually made my hair like that soft that it would justify the price tag because this is an expensive hairline like most of their products are good i just didn't really like this one like didn't like the smell thought my hair felt kind of dry so Hard pass on this one i have my botanics micellar water which was one of my items from my project pan and I used that up quite quickly actually and it kind of made me realize the benefits of micellar water which I didn't appreciate as much before so I ended up getting the NYX micellar water because I know NYX is cruelty free. I couldn't really find anything like yay or nay about this brand and I really like this. It doesn't sting my eyes and it gets makeup off really well. I've been using reusable cotton pads with this and I also cut up like one of my microfiber towels into little squares. So those two things combined with micellar water are really great for makeup removal. You probably see them like cleaning up my under eye a lot in videos. So I wouldn't repurchase this specific one because it did kind of sting my eyes, but my cellar water in general is something that I am a fan of now. By my Astrowood Naturals Hyaluronic Acid, I get this off of Amazon. I stopped using this for like a month just to see if it made a difference because I have so many steps in my skincare routine and I wanted to eliminate one and my skin definitely felt drier without this, so I did repurchase it. I ended up getting a smaller bottle because even though the big bottle is way better value, like price per ounce, it's not very travel friendly. And since I am going home for the holidays, I knew I would want a smaller bottle. 
but I like this stuff. Definitely a continuous repurchase item for me. Another skincare item I have is the Ordinary Lactic Acid Treatment. So I talked a little bit about how I got this and then I didn't really use it a ton because I couldn't notice a huge difference. I did start to notice a difference with using this on a more regular basis. This definitely sold me on AHA Exfoliant. I don't know that I'd repurchase this specific one because I found some other ones that I really, really like, which I will talk more about in just a second. But I do like the Ordinary's products. I think they're good. Some of them just really aren't as cheap as people say they are because it's like 10 bucks for a teensy little bottle that you can go through pretty quickly. I have this hard candy longwear setting spray and this was one of my project pan items I did completely use this up and I'm glad I did because it's kind of just stung my face whenever I sprayed it and even though it worked well as a setting spray like if it's stinging my face I don't really want to use it so would not repurchase this one there are other drugstore setting sprays that I like better that don't sting my face I have my Ardell Wispies and coordinating with these, which I accidentally threw away the packaging already, are my lashes that I get on Amazon. I don't know if I'd repurchase the Wispies just yet. They're almost a little too natural. I'm like, if I'm going to go through the effort of putting on false lashes, I want like a little bit more oomph behind them and these don't quite give that. We'll definitely be repurchasing the Amazon ones and I think I'm going to try out Kiss Lashes. I hear pretty good things about Kiss Lashes and I kind of want like a little bit more of a dramatic eyelash because like I said if I'm going through the trouble of putting on eyelashes like they better be banging. So I'll be repurchasing lashes just maybe not these ones. My Too Faced Hangover 3 and 1 Primer and Setting Spray. So my mom bought this for me. While I was home for spring break last year so this lasted me almost eight months and I absolutely love this I think it smells good I think it makes my makeup look really good it's just like all around a really great product I'm just not gonna be repurchasing it at the moment because I have a couple setting sprays to work through at the moment and since this one is a little more pricey I don't see a need to repurchase it while I have other ones to use at the moment I don't necessarily like any of the other ones as much as I like this I'm just not gonna I know if I buy another one of this, I'm just going to use it all up and still have the other setting spray sitting there. So I'm going to try to use those up first. I have my Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser. This was the travel size. So I either use this to take off my makeup. Like if I'm in the shower, if I'm in my bathroom and I'm going to wash my face right afterwards, I'll use it to take off my makeup. Or on days where my skin is like very red and irritated, I will just use this as my straight up cleanser. And I won't use any other cleanser because it's super, super gentle and pH balanced. So I tried to like... Be a little thrifty and buy a dupe for this which is the bliss milky makeup melt or something like that it's very obviously meant to be a dupe for this and it is just not as good the smell is not the same and apparently is not ph balanced so it doesn't feel as good on the skin and i have to use more of it to take my makeup off so the fact that it's cheaper doesn't really matter so i am definitely going to repurchase this i just kind of want to use up the dupe that i bought first next i have this philosophy purity made simple cleanser and there is still a teeny bit left in here so I got this in a stocking stuffer like last Christmas I think and I rediscovered it last time I went home over the summer realized I really liked it and wanted to use up the bottle and then I did some research and learned that philosophy is actually not a cruelty free brand which is like weirdly surprising to me it just seems like it would be a cruelty free brand so I was trying to find a cleanser dupe for this and I think I found it so I'm just going to show you, I'm going to like squeeze this out and show you the texture of it. It's like this like milky, but still a gel. It's kind of unique, like surprisingly so. Like it's not as jelly of a cleanser as the Glossier. It's definitely like a cleanser cleanser, not like a conditioning cleanser. So then on this side, I have the Pacifica Rose kombucha flower powered face wash which is 10 bucks you can get it at target riley rose bunch of fun places and the consistency is basically the same it doesn't have the same smell so if you like only love the purity made simple cleanser because of the smell 
not gonna love it but the consistency is darn near the same i've only been using this for like three ish weeks now so i can't like fully say if it is definitely a replacement for the purity made simple it might be breaking me out something's been breaking me out but i also might just be stressed so i don't know yet i need to play around with it in my routine some more long story short as much as i love this i will not be repurchasing it i have this tarte sex kit and eyeliner which i'm not gonna be repurchasing at the moment because I have the Tarte Double Take Eyeliner, which has one pencil and one liquid felt tip liner on the other end, but I really love Tarte's eyeliner formula in general. Eyeliner is something that's worth a splurge to me, like, always, because my eyes are very, very watery, and it's really hard for me to find an eyeliner that actually, like, holds up throughout the day. It's basically, like, my contacts get dry, and then my eyes water to try and compensate for it, so it's not a fun time. So I'm not going to be repurchasing this anytime soon because my eyeliner is still fairly new, but I will probably repurchase this eventually because I love it and like the lid has cat ears, you guys. Like how cute is that? I have this Milani Make It Last setting spray. Really like this, but it's like 10 bucks for two ounces, which really isn't that great of a price. Like I think like price per ounce Urban Decay All Nighter is a really similar setting spray. So I don't know if I'd repurchase this or not because like you go through two ounces so quick. As much as I like the formula, like it's not really that great of a price. I'd kind of rather just spend a little bit extra money and get my Too Faced one, you know what I mean? But if you're like a strictly drugstore person, this is a good one. I have this Earth Science Healthy Skin Ceramide Facial Lotion. I really like the actual lotion of this. I like that it's cruelty free and the price would be good except the packaging just sucks. It's this like really hard plastic and like I can tell I have a lot of products left in here but I can't get it out and like I know I could cut the bottle open but then like how do I keep it from drying out and it's just not worth it to me like whenever packaging is like this I'm like it's just it's just not worth it no matter how much I like the product so I won't be repurchasing this even though I like the actual stuff that's inside. I have the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow the light shade. I know it looks like there's stuff in here that's just because it's like coated the outside. I physically cannot squeeze anything else out of this tube so I did completely use this up and I won't be repurchasing this because it's not cruelty free obviously I do still have some of the darker shade left which I'm kind of struggling to use up because I can't really find like a mix of this that I absolutely love it does work pretty well mixed with my ColourPop no filter foundation but I also just feel like it kind of just like gives my skin no life to it. I don't know. Like it's not like a wow combination. I'll see if I can find a combination for this that I really like. If not, I might just let this one be because I don't love this on my skin anymore. I do think it's been breaking me out because every time I wear this, my skin's like, I don't know you guys. Like I feel bad not using it up because I said I would, but like this is not my color. It's just not. I have all of these brow pencils that I somehow used up in the three month time period since I said I would use just one of them up. So I don't think brow pencils are that great of value, but they're so convenient. So I'm on the hunt for a brow pencil that's still like a decent value and like might last you like a month and isn't over like six bucks because I don't want to repurchase that every single month if it's going to cost me a lot of money. Here's my ColourPop Fairy Floss Gloss. This is, I can't get anything else out of this. Like it is dried to the sides. I will definitely repurchase this. I think this is a beautiful lip gloss. I have not found another nude lip gloss that is as beautiful as this one is on my skin tone personally. So I'll definitely be repurchasing this eventually. I just haven't yet. It Cosmetics Secret Sauce Moisturizer. I got this for free when signing up for BoxyCharm. Liked it, would not repurchase just because it's really expensive and I didn't like it that much. Paula's Choice Skin Perfecting 2% BHA Liquid Travel Size. I really liked this. I don't know if I like it more than my Kosar X BHA Blackhead Liquid, but I did really like this. This one smells a little bit more intense than the Kosar X one, so I'm leaning to believe that it's a little more active. I still have a little bit of this one left, but once I use this up, I might purchase the full size of the Paula's Choice just to play with it some more and see how I feel about it. But 
This definitely did its job travel-wise. Rada Rosehip Oil, I used this up a while ago. I've already repurchased this. I'm trying to use up my jojoba oil at the moment that I thought was breaking me out, but turned out not to be breaking me out. But I already repurchased this, I love it. I like it better than the jojoba oil. I think it's more moisturizing and just does more for my skin in general. So really, really love this. Great value for the price. Like it's 12 bucks for like pretty good quality four ounces of rosehip oil, so. Really like this. Physician's Formula ID Puffer, would not repurchase this. Like it, it kind of felt gimmicky, like it's nice to put on the eyes, but doesn't really do anything. Physician's Formula 24 Karat Gold Collagen Serum. Again, I just didn't really feel like this did anything for my skin. Like it's cute with the gold flakes in there and everything, but like if I'm spending money and time to put something on my skin, it better do something for my skin. Touch and Soul No Pore Bloom and Wet n Wild Dewy Primer, both products from my Project Pan. Both really great products and I completely use them up. I would probably repurchase both of these eventually. I just have some other primers I would want to go through first. Way Dry Shampoo, I didn't buy this. Someone left this in my laundry room at my dorm when I still lived there. Like when you're moving out, people just like leave piles of stuff that they don't want. And I was like, ooh, I like this brand, it smells good. So I wouldn't repurchase this, but I do really want their perfume that's coming out that smells like the original way scent. I really want that. And we're at the bottom of the bag. So I have two empty Pixie Glow Tonics. So this is the AHA exfoliant that I found I liked better than just putting the straight up acid peel on my face. I started using this on a regular basis when I took it home for Thanksgiving. I use it every single day and I noticed such a difference in my skin that week. So on Cyber Monday, I bought, I did like a huge pixie haul and I ended up getting two of these big glow tonic bottles. Like it's huge. And I got like, one of them was free and then I got a bunch of other like free stuff from them. And they also sent me like a huge bag of like their travel size. So I have a ton of this stuff, definitely a repurchase. It's like a little pricey for the drugstore, but it's a really great product. Like, so good, I love it so much. I love Pixie as a brand, like they're amazing. So that is the bottom of the bag other than this can of cat food that I don't know why is in there. So we're just gonna put all right, so now for some more updates on my project pan. Do excuse me if I forget any items. I have finals brain at the moment. So first up, I have the Wet n Wild Cushion Foundation. I haven't quite like used this up. It's just that like, it's already gotten like really dried out. So I'm gonna try to use it up a little bit, but like as it's dried, the formula has not been as great and it's not one that I really love to reach for. So, I'm gonna do my best to finish this up by like December 21st, I think is the winter equinox, but like, I don't know. I love the way this looks on the skin, but like it dries out so quickly. I wish they would just like take this formula and put it in like a bottle. Maybelline Fit Me Powder. It's getting there. I don't have a ton left. I don't know if I'll quite have finished this by December 21st, but I think I'll finish it like by the end of January, if not before that. I don't think I'll ever pan this palette because <laughs> I have used like nothing but this blush palette for two and a half months straight, pretty much. And <laughs> there's like not even dents in any of the shades. So <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever finish this up. We'll see. The two concealers. I think I left both of the concealers from my Project Pan in Ohio because I took them both home and I haven't seen either of them since and I don't know how that happened. The Catrice one was, it was done. I couldn't get anything else out of it anyways. I was only holding on to it to bring back and put in my empties bag. The Tarte Shape Tape still had quite a bit amount of product in there. I've been liking that a lot more, like since I stopped doing the thing where you draw giant triangles underneath your eye, like every YouTuber told you you needed to do. And I just put like a little bit of it in the corner and blend it out. Like it's a really pretty concealer and I could actually see myself repurchasing that, which I never thought I'd say. This Anastasia palette, I'm quite proud of. So Starburst already had pan in it. I wasn't planning on hitting pan in this and I hit pan in both of these, which is like a pretty good accomplishment. I hit like pretty big pan in Crushed Pearl. 
And I wasn't really expecting to hit Panda Mimosa because I can like barely use it because it's like not really a good shade for me. But, like you can see like the whole outline of the pan in there and like a little bit of baby pan peeking through. So this is definitely one that I'm going to keep working on. It's like a little bit difficult because as beautiful as this highlighter formula is, none of these are colors that I particularly reach for as a highlighter anymore. This was like very early in my highlighting phases when I got this. So it's a little bit difficult to work through this, but like it's a beautiful formula so it's not that difficult if you know what I'm saying. This is the one I'm most proud of. This is the NYX HD Blush and Taupe, which I use as a contour. Like you must just not get a whole ton of product in here because I hit major, major pan in this and I really wasn't expecting to because I don't contour that much. Like I have like a little bit of bronzer on right now, but like contouring isn't really magish. So I'm really surprised that I hit pan on this, especially considering I bought this in like March. Really impressed with that, which I think I said I was going to reach for, and then I ended up not anyways. I've been trying to get a little bit more creative with my lip products lately, so I don't know. And then I have this NYX brow mascara. So she still has like a decent amount of life left in her. I don't know at what point I'll just be like, yeah, you're done. But like, it's definitely like drier than when I got it, but it's also like not the worst thing because that means it really has some like grip to it. Okay, Urban Decay Primer Potion. We're making progress on her, but she still has a good amount left in her. I just like my Milani primer better, so like when I'm having like a rough makeup week, I'm gonna reach for the Milani one because I trust it better with my makeup and how my makeup's gonna turn out. I'm not sure if Project Pan is for me. I started to get really, really bored while going through it, I did really like completely find it like not buying any of the new products like in these categories until Cyber Monday hit and I was like, <laughs> Project Pan who? We're getting all the new products. To me, Project Pan is about like reminding yourself to enjoy the products that you already have in your collection and it almost did the opposite of that for me. For me, it just started to be like, I was resenting the products. Like I'd be like, oh, I have to use that e.l.f. blush palette again. And it's like, there's four colors in here. Like there's tons of variety in here. It's just like the fact that I had to use it made me less inspired by it. I, I don't know. It's not to say that I would never do a project pan in the future. It's just that three months is a long time. Quite a bit for the two brain cells that are clanking around in my head as we speak. I'm definitely still down for like videos that encourage you to use your collection though. I think I might maybe do a shot my stash. I might do more dupe tutorials where I try to dupe new products with stuff that's already in my collection and do looks with it. I really liked doing that James Charles and Morby video. I don't know if you guys liked that or not, but that was like super, super fun for me. So yeah, I kind of was expecting to like Project Pan more than I did. Like, yeah, I still got that excitement when I hit pan on something, but I just like, I don't know if it's for me and I don't know if that's going to be like disappointing for you guys, but straight up Project Pans, definitely not going to be doing one like as soon as winter starts. I might do one in spring. We'll see. If I do one again, I'm definitely going to give myself more products in each category because just one product pretty much in each category was not it for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know down below what products you've used up in the past couple of months. I'm really curious. That's always like a true tell-all of like if someone likes a product is if they actually just use it completely up because obviously you liked it if you used it that much. And make sure you subscribe and have my notifications on so you don't miss any of my declutter videos this week. Love you guys and I'll see you in my next video.